Hey guys, Corbin from Circa 2020 back with another budget firearm to go over. And a good way for you guys to save money, go to the range, have fun, and protect yourself in your house. Now, I want to end the stigma, first of all, with high point firearms. I have never personally owned a high point pistol. I have shot one of their first uh, 40s, I believe it was, that they came out with big, clunky, ugly, heavy, not junk, though. It's big, it's ugly, it's clunky, it's heavy. Um, but they're a, a fairly tight, good shooting, ridiculously reliable firearm that you can buy for 200 bucks. So I'm not going to crack down on high point. Now, there's a bunch of people in the world who won't buy one, won't own one just because of what they are. Um, but let's talk about what they are. You know, I had a couple little small things that went on with this, uh, when I first got it, if you call high point, and talk to somebody about warranty parts, you're gonna to talk to the same little old lady every time. Um, I wish I could rem remember her name, but probably wouldn't name her just, just cause. But then she transfers you to another lady for accessories who's the same lady every time. Uh, she had told me that they have like three or four people who work in their main office. I mean, that's, that's incredible. A small American made family company like that just because of that, I want to just give them all the praise in the world. Um, they suffer a lot of hate on the internet. A lot of people say to throw their firearms at people instead of shoot them. That's ridiculous. Uh, one thing I can guarantee with, with high point firearms is, at least with you know the limited experience I have with the pistol and the experience I have with this carbine, you load one up, pull the trigger, it goes bang. It's going to go bang every time, no matter what, forever and ever and ever. Um, I've watched plenty of reliability videos on YouTube with their pistols and guys just really treat them like crap, even shoot them and they still fire. So, but let's go on. We're not here to talk about high point pistols. I don't own one, probably won't ever own one. Um, but I don't think it's a bad idea maybe to have one as a backup, you know, like a end of the world style deal. If you have a lot of nine millimeter ammo, go out and grab a high, uh, a high point nine millimeter pistol at least if something happens to your firearm you got that as a backup and you're not spending any money on it anyways done with the high point pistols let's talk about high point carbines now i had not known that high point carbines have existed pretty much almost as long as the pistols have existed they've been in, in existence for a long time um, up until the ts version they were extremely ugly uh, the TS version hasn't made them a whole lot more pretty. Um, they're still kind of a weird-looking, ugly firearm, but they shoot. They shoot. They shoot well. They're a lot of fun. Um, I enjoy the heck out of taking mine to the range, and this is why I want to tell you, or this is why I'm going to tell you why the High Point 1095 TS is a great way to spend 300 bucks to go have fun, to have a truck gun, to have a self-defense, home defense gun. Uh, it's kind of a do-it-all deal, and you can get it in many calibers. So let's break it down first. What is this? This is a 16-inch pistol caliber carbine. Um, so it's technically a carbine length rifle. Um, you don't have to have any special permit, anything like that to own. Uh, as far as stock and foregrip rules, it's going to be all rifle related. And it is a blowback operation, 10 plus one capacity uh, with the 10 mil. It's 10 plus one capacity. And uh, there's only a few companies out there that build actual like enhancement parts for it. Um, Red Ball makes extended magazines where it looks like they basically just use two regular high point magazines and they kind of looks like a dog leg. Um, and it, but it allows it to come out of the grip and kind of keep the same grip profile. They look really weird, but when you put them in the, the carbine, they don't look so bad. Um, but I think you can get 20 plus one then, or maybe 25 with the Red Ball. Uh, Downrange Products LLC builds some accessory stuff. Tejas Products on Amazon is where I got this American flag uh, metal inlay you can put on it just to make it a little bit cooler, a little bit nicer. I'm not usually a tacky guy like that, but I just, you know, this is a budget carbine. I wanted to have some fun with it. Um, 
blowback action firearms uh, normally in a carbine style you're gonna have a little bit more recoil a little bit dirtier shooting uh, this is you're gonna see some footage in here where we shoot a uh, couple mags out of it and I have no qualms at all about how this thing fires um, let's go over some features about why it fires so well and just kind of why it's so much fun to fire so first of all, we're going to just work from the tip of the barrel to the tip of the stock because there's features packed end to end. Yes, the High Point Carbine has features packed end to end. First off, we obviously have a threaded barrel. Pretty awesome. Um, I believe the earlier High Point Carbines did not have a threaded barrel. The TS versions, the TS basically means this is a TS stock. Uh, the earlier high points, like I said, were just miserably ugly. TS came out with a little better stock. Uh, we're going to talk about another stock that you can do that really makes this thing super cool, but kind of takes all the high point out of it besides the actual uh, action and barrel itself. So we got a threaded barrel. This is a 578 by 28 thread, the same you would find on like a 1911 45 caliber. Um, kind of hard to find stuff uh, on the cheap. For that, uh, not many places make adapters to go to anything else. So I do actually have a like a compensator muzzle brake. It, it's really a compensator, which I you don't really need with this because there's not much recoil. But it is a compensator I have ordered for that. Who knows when it'll come in? I actually got to check to see if it's even ordered because I feel like I ordered it like two months ago when I got the firearm and I still don't have it. Uh, a little Picatinny rail here on the bottom of the barrel you know if you want to add uh you know like a sight uh, or a laser light anything like that um pick a tinny rail now under its normal i should have grabbed this stuff how quickly can i get to it not that quickly i'm not going to worry about it this comes with iron sights you have a weird rail uh, just go on Google, go on High Point site, look it up so you can reference this. If I'm the only video you're watching, which is quite impossible that you found my page, but either way, it comes with a uh, barrel mounted front A2 style sight uh, that's put in with set screws right here on the very front of it. On the rear, it has this risen up open sight, you know, elevation windage adjustable. I'm sure it works great. I'm not an open sight guy. I have more cheap red dots laying around than anybody needs. So I threw one on it. Actually, I threw one of my pro points on it, Tasco pro points on it. And it was okay. I didn't really care for it. Went out and got this Ozark armament. And we're going to do a rant and rave on the Ozark armament here probably tomorrow. Um, real quick, I'm firing off videos every single day this week, maybe even two like I did yesterday. Reason being, subscribe to the page. You're going to get a lot of this. I'm on kind of a COVID layoff right now for some weird stuff going on. So because of that, I actually have a chance to sit down when the family's not asleep and speak loudly into the, the camera here and talk about stuff that I wouldn't normally get a chance to talk about or be too tired and just go to bed. So instead of doing a video a week, I'm going to pound videos on this channel while I have time. Um, so we're going to do an Ozark Armament video because I'm telling you, this site is for the price. I, And I'm not the only one who says that. Uh, I talked to a couple guys on an AR group, a couple guys on the High Point group. Um, everybody loves the Ozark Armament site. For the money, it's just really a strong site. Um, back to the carbine here. So we got the Picatinny rail. The only thing that I don't like, High Point quality control, eh, you know, this is uh, like a polymer rail. It has a little bit of a bow to it. I don't know if you'll be able to pick it up. See, yeah, uh, see how it has a little bit of a bow. The actual rail itself doesn't seem to have a bow. It's just the area that goes around the barrel. It's kind of annoying to me. It really bothers me. You can take that rail off if you just separate this front stock area. That rail just slides out of a slot and then you just have a tiny little square hole. Um, not a, you know, not a hugely big deal. Downrange Products makes a nice big barrel shroud that makes this thing look pretty cool in the front end of it. You get rid of this and you can get a barrel shroud with an aluminum, it's an aluminum shroud. You can get it with an aluminum pick rail on it. They're like 70 bucks. Um, I'm not a huge like spend money on like weird accessories like that kind of guy. Uh, like the inlay was $14, you know what I mean? That kind of stuff, no problem with, but 
to replace something with something that's just a little bit nicer and spend that much money, uh, this is a budget channel and we don't play that shit. So, moving on. The stock area. We have, I think somebody's at the door, probably one of the kiddos. We have um, this kind of decent looking front end of the stock here. Um, you can buy rails, high point cells, side rails. I believe high point does. I know there's another company in Ohio that does as well that sells side rails. So you can add the side rails, bolt them right in. So then you have kind of like a quad rail attachment because downrange products also makes a rail if you want to extend this top Picatinny rail all the way down the firearm. If you do that, this changes the look because this thing constantly like steps down and it looks the side profile of the firearm just looks a little funny because it's constantly stepping down towards the barrel. If you add that uh, that top rail to it, your kids, if you add the top rail to it, it looks pretty nice. Um, but moving on, the only issue that I had are these pins. There's two takedown pins on the firearm. Um, there's one here and there's one right here. And then once you pull those out, the entire receiver can be removed from the bottom of the plastic frame stock slash trigger area, pistol grip, everything. The only thing that holds these pins in are these swing clips. So these swing clips here, they give you a tool from the factory. You just push the, the back side of the takedown pin has spring on it. You, you push the takedown pin and swing the clip door open and then the pin pulls out. Sometime, the very first time I fired the gun, I can't remember if the door was moved over to the open slot when I started firing or if it wasn't fully tight or if I got a weak spring from the factory. But either way, I got home cleaning it up, realized I'm missing the front takedown pin. Call High Point, talk to the little old lady. Um, she sends me three of them. Says, hey, it can be a problem sometimes. Uh, we revised the spring on there, put a little bit tighter spring on it, and you can definitely feel the one I put in is tighter. Put it in, we'll give you three of them. And I said, well, while you're at it, uh, I'd like to order these magazine holders. So for on the stock, it replaces one of the stock bolts. There's this nifty mount to mount two magazines, one on the right, one on the left, so you can carry a total of three magazines on the firearm, which is pretty nice considering it's only 10 plus one, really 10 once you go to a second mag. So you can carry a total of 31 rounds on the firearm itself, not to mention anything else you'd have on you. If you had red ball extended mags, I they, you might be able to make them work in there. I'd actually like to try that. So we'll, we'll probably order one of those and see if it works because then you could carry 50, 60 rounds on you and that would be a lot nicer. Um, so you have a right side ejection port and then you have a left side side charging. Now this thing was checked, it is completely empty. One of the cheap little accessories that I did break down and buy was this nice from Downrange Products, I believe it was. They have this nice, really nice, it's a little big, a little bigger than I thought, but a real nice smooth charging handle. The charging handle that comes on it from the factory is basically like a bolt cover because there's just one bolt, like a 5 16 license plate screw size bolt that threads into the bolt itself. So you have a charging bolt that threads into the bolt and then this just kind of rides on it. The reason that's loose is because when you pull that, oh, when you pull down, you have to push it in. It has to slide in and out for you to hook it into the this uh, receiver cover, this upper receiver area, so you can hang the bolt all the way at the back. Once you uh, have it loaded, you just pull down, pull out, and let it fly forward. Um, having the extension on the charging handle is really nice. Uh, the factory charging handle is small. It's kind of hard on the hands. It's kind of hard to get hold of. It doesn't feel really good. Um, it's just nice to have, and they make a ton of different ones, different colors, different sizes. I might actually go with a smaller one eventually because it is a little big and a little gaudy, but it looks okay. Moving back through the firearm here, um, all the rails you can get from downrange and you can get all kinds of extensions and side rails and everything to really make this thing 
kind of look a lot better and have a lot more functionality with the rails if you want to tack it out, which now don't make it what it isn't. It's a 10 millimeter carbine from High Point. It does shoot extremely well. It is a very accurate firearm. I've watched videos of guy ringing steel at 200 yards with a nine millimeter version of this. I can imagine the 10 mil, they're trying to break in the door, the little guy. I can imagine the 10 millimeter version of this would ring steel easily at 200. Now, are you gonna pop someone in the head at 200 yards with a 10 millimeter carbine from high point? Probably not, but it's capable of getting out to distance easily at 100 yards with the 10 millimeter, easily at 100 yards. Um, you can group probably three or four MOA at 100 yards with one of these off a bench. Um, offhand, 15 yards is, is what you're going to see in our video. We had great success just pounding the middle of a six inch shoot, shoot and see target and really doing it rapidly offhand, just coming up front with the, with the firearm and about a, a round every second, half a second, just with this Ozark armament red dot, staying on target, everything worked flawlessly. So I'm going to move back through the firearm and we're going to get to the only part of the, the carbine that besides the looks that I really think they should improve on. The trigger. How do I put this in a way that's not terrible? So the trigger feel actually has a decent feel. Now it is plastic, it is polymer. We're going to double check that she's open here and not loaded. The trigger has a very wide, a very wide face. It's kind of hard to tell, but a very wide face with a, a nice slotted groove on it. Um, the only problem is I've read in a lot of places that it has somewhere around an, a seven or eight pound pull. I think that could be improved upon greatly. Now, as far as creep, you have a little bit of like plastic walk, not really creep so much, but just like the front end of the spring, taking up that little bit of slack, very little. We're talking, 16th to an eighth of an inch of play and then you're pretty much on the wall there is no travel it's just extremely heavy um but it is a pretty positive feel now the reset let's so we're gonna go boom yeah the reset space there is no reset point it's pretty much non-existent you basically have to let there does, isn't even like a, a, a heavy spring feel that really pulls it forward when you shoot or after the gun fires. There isn't even that heavy, like on certain pistols, you can feel it really pull up off the back wall and reset. This, you kind of just got to let it go. Take almost all the pressure off the, the trigger itself because it doesn't reset hard. The front, like firing the gun, the trigger's not terrible, it's just heavy. The reset is abysmal none they could work on that uh, i don't know exactly how this trigger mechanism work i've never torn one of these apart um, and i don't know if anybody makes one so pistol grip actually has a nice pretty ergonomic feel to it it's got a slot for it's got like a, an edge for your thumb it's got an edge for your index so or your your uh, middle finger so as far as feel for the pistol grip you can, I mean, this is a heavy firearm and you can control, you could shoot this one-handed if you had to. It does have a nice balance point right on the pistol grip, even with this heavy foregrip up here, it does have a nice balance. Now, you may think this foregrip's gigantic. Well, the way I run this is I want to run this as a like truck gun slash home defense weapon. So I have my 870 TAC-14, which is the go-to somebody breaks in the house, they're getting the 12 gauge. Um, for whatever reason, if I had to pick a second firearm to defend the house with, it would absolutely be this. Because at that 0 to 15, 25, 35 yards, this thing is absolutely amazing. I have the laser sighted in for 15 yards. And I'm sure it would work. It's a little bit off to the right, but it's, it's pretty close to on the path. I'm sure it would be perfectly uh, subsequent co-witnessing zero from 10 yards from, you know, even 10 feet out to 
30 yards, the, the, the laser would work, especially in a nighttime situation. So I will say it's pretty easy to get rounds off in a hurry, even with the bad reset on the trigger. Um, the fact that you don't have to, the trigger doesn't have to travel far to fire. You just, as soon as it fires, you let up and you just keep coming back. And it's pretty easy to, to rip some rounds off in a hurry if you have to. Um, 10 millimeter ammo is a absolute snotty, snotty round. Um, lots, even in this, it has a decent amount of recoil. 10 millimeter pistols have tons of recoil. A 10 millimeter round, I will show you here. What we have here is our boy, Uncle Ted Nugent, is a big, big ambassador of the 10 millimeter round. He makes a 10 millimeter penetrator hollow point self-defense round. Uh, both carry magazines are loaded with this. And I would like to shoot one or two of these at the range just to make sure they're traveling pretty close to the same path as what my arms core does. But same grain uh, bullet, I think it should be okay. But again, Ted Nugent makes a beautiful 10 millimeter case self-defense, big old hollow point. And uh, I hope I never have to use them. But I, I do have a feeling this would be quite the, uh, the effective tool for home defense. Moving back to the rear stock area, along with the magazine holder, we also have this cheek pad. Now, I looked at some other videos on older TSs and then older high points. The biggest problem with old high points was they had a real elongated cheek pad. And it didn't work at all. It was low. It didn't work well. It was hard. Just the stock has kind of always sucked on these. But the new TSs are probably the by far the best variation, the most improved out of all of them. What I like, this cheek pad is raised up and it is soft. Like when I say soft, I don't know what to describe it as. But it's like that real tacky, like you could pinch it. It's so tacky like a tacky, rubbery, almost skin feeling uh, surface on this cheek pad. And it's just ridiculously soft. It's like a gel. It's like a gel, like a like skin covered gel. It's really nice. You get your head on that, even with the recoil, it's okay. Um, super, hang on buddy, I'm, I'm almost done doing a video my five-year-old wants to play. So we gotta wrap this up. Doing this, uh, this cheek pad, they've improved a lot from what I've seen. It really is a nice uh, feel when you shoot. My favorite part of, second favorite part of the whole firearm. This butt stock is spring loaded. And it has about a full inch of travel. I didn't think it would work because it's kind of, it's kind of heavy. The springs are heavy. But because the firearm's so heavy, shooting a 10 mil, I'm sure with the 380, the 9, and, and maybe even the 40, you don't get as much recoil. With the 10 mil, I mean, it gives you a little, a little shot, you know? It, video conclusive, and you can watch it here when we put it in, the, that recoil system works. That buffer system works. You could see that the firearm was backing up onto the wall of that buttstock. So I'm sure that soaked up a decent amount of it still. I mean, I wouldn't say it's bad by any means, by any stretch. It's a pistol caliber carbine and a firearm that weighs, I'm going to say, at least six pounds, maybe seven. It's a, it's a heavy, you know, PCC. It's very heavy. So, but even so, recoil not bad, but it could have been worse with the 10 mil. Um, but I think that recoil pad works well. So talk a little bit about the site. I don't want to touch on it too much. Um, I think one of these style optics, one of these uh, 4X uh, red dots from Ozark Armament. This is an Ozark Armament Rhino. I think one of these in a regular red dot is perfect for this kind of firearm because most of it is point and shoot with this. Um, again, like I said, you can stretch out to distance. This this will shoot 100 yards, and I feel like you can group on a target off a bench with 100 yards with this. Um, but most of what this firearm is really designed to do is 50 yards and in to just pound lead downrange within 50 yards, and it does that awesome. Price. You can pick these up anywhere for right around $300. Um, I, I think I paid $300-ish. 
And I'll tell you a quick story on how I ended up with this thing. So uh, I was replacing my deer rifle, my all around hunting rifle. I had a Ruger American 308, great firearm, no complaints at all. I saw they came out with the American Predator that had a Picatinny rail on the top, was OD green stock, used the new, it was a Gen 2 Predator, had the new uh, ACI magazines, and I really wanted a 6.5 Creedmoor rifle. Um, everything I saw on YouTube, people were just 800,000 yards with this Ruger American Predator, out of the box, just absolutely incredible, incredible caliber. But Ruger makes an incredible bolt action rifle. So I picked that up, had to have it, sold my 308, went and bought basically the same firearm, just a little updated, different model in a 6.5 Creedmoor. And I walked in and I said, this was when I was watching all the videos like I'm just making. I walked in, I said, hey, do you guys ever get any of those high point carbines? And he's like, oh yeah, I got three of them down there. He goes, and I got the 10 mil, the elusive 10 mil. Because if you've ever looked, the 10 mil is really hard to get a hold of didn't leave without it. You can't. Sometimes that happens in a gun shop and everybody who buys a lot of firearms can relate. I know everybody in my family who has firearms can relate. Sometimes you walk into a, uh, a gun shop, an FFL, you're there for one thing and you might bring another thing home too because you're not going to leave it sit. And the fact that he had one of these, the fact that he was willing to actually deal on it, um, I just got it. And Another quick story. So in the video I'm about to put up of us shooting, my grandfather and I uh, both shoot a magazine, just doing some quick video at the range. Kind of cool, though. Uh, I love going out and shooting with my grandfather. It's such quality time. And I, we used to do that so much when I was a kid. And I really miss being able to do it now. I'm so busy. But it was uh, re very refreshing to get out on the range with him and, and put some lead down range because he's a shooter. And he's getting up there in age now, but he's still a shooter and he's still... He's a blast to hang out with. So, Pap, if you're watching this, I absolutely love you and I adore you. And I hope we get much more time together. And Graham, I love you too. <laughs> um, but anyways, you're going to see us blasting some lead downrange, 15 yards, just rapid grouping. Um, quick story, though. I remember a phone call that I made to him about a month ago. Uh, I had it for a few weeks, didn't really do anything with it, just kind of played with it, got a couple things. I don't even know if I'd shot it at that point, but I called him up and said, hey, I want to let you know, I got one of these carbines. You're going to love it. And he was just like, man, nah, you yeah, yeah. didn't really say much on the phone. I was like, okay, well, I thought he'd be more excited. Well, we got to the range and I broke this thing out. Didn't even really tell him I brought it. Didn't really tell him I was going to shoot it. Just got it out of the bag, went up, said I want to do some 15 yards with it, maybe 25 yards on the pistol range. Went up, bang, bang, bang. And I can see him, he's kind of peeking at it, kind of looking at it. And I said, well, you're going to shoot mags out of this then for sure. So I went back. Filled up another mag with a uh, Salier and below, or actually Arms Core 10 millimeter. Uh, that this this firearm. If you guys got a high point carbine in a 10 mil, I can only assume it works with the rest of them. Arms Core makes a great ammo for it. Um, so loaded up some Arms Core 10 mil and uh, passed him the firearm. He shot some rounds out of it, and uh, I really like that. That was a lot of fun. I think I like shooting that more than I like shooting an AR. And <laughs> Then later on, we're sitting there and he's like, you know, when you called me on the phone and said you got that, I'm thinking to myself, now my past very, very religious, doesn't, doesn't say a whole lot when it comes to negative, you know, things. He goes, I wonder what in the heck do you want to hunk a crap like that for? I point, because yeah, he has a lot of guns and a lot of really nice firearms, just beautiful, just top in the line, beautiful firearms. That's how he is. He's worked all his life. He has the money to do it. I love him for it, and he has some really nice pieces. And we're going to go over that someday. If he lets me, we might do some of his collection and just show you guys what's out there and, and you know, how avid some collectors are because he's a really <clears throat> avid collector and shooter, especially in the pistol realm. And he goes, you know, I can't, I always wonder, you know, what the heck do you want a hunk of crap like that for? But I'll tell you, I really like it. And <laughs> I was blown away because... You know, I really thought he wouldn't say much. He'd kind of, eh, eh, you know, grunt about it a little bit. But he really enjoyed firing this at the range. And, and I think you will, too. So if you guys got a couple hundred bucks in your pocket and you got a bunch of pistol ammo, go out and pick up a high point carbine. If your friends want to make fun of you for it, tell them to come to the range, hand it to them. They'll probably end up with one, too. 
because you can't not like this firearm. No, it's not an H&K or a Chris PCC. It's not a Ruger PCC. It's a high point. It's long, it's heavy, it's ugly, but for the money, that's the thing. That's what this channel is solely based on, getting your dollar to go farther. Because here's the deal. You take a Ruger 9mm PCC and you take a, a, a high point 9mm carbine like this out to the range and you stand at 25 yards and you rip 10 rounds down range they're both going to put 10 rounds down range probably with the same amount of accuracy i think the accuracy on, on this specific firearm is fantastic um and one's seven eight hundred dollars nine hundred dollars one's 300 bucks so it's up to you guys. You guys all got to make your own decisions. But when it comes down to it, uh, I want to end the stigma on high point because even though they make heavy, ugly guns that, you know, aren't super desirable for collectors, they make a gun that's reliable, that functions well. And for the money is some of the best stuff you can get in that price range as far as reliability. And you're supporting the little old ladies in the shop at, in uh, Ohio, I think it is. Great guys. So anyways, we're going to wrap this up here. Um, again, High point, 1095 TS. You're going to see some video of us knocking some rounds down range. And we hope you guys will come up for the next video. And you know what? I may later on here just knock out a video on this Ozark armament. So you're looking for a sub, a $50 or less, good 4X red dot like this. Tune in because we're going to do another video on the Ozark armament Rhino. Another veteran-owned company that sells on Amazon. We'll see you guys around. Enjoy the video coming up next here. Hey guys, so I was just reviewing the footage and realized I forgot to tell you about these awesome bullpup conversions for the High Point Carbine. So go check out HightowerArmory.com to check out these sweet bullpup conversions in all these colors. <laughs>